Yeah, folks have been cut off the phone, so Gina and I can't even get to talk. Oh, they're quite up to date, Liverpool, I hear. They got phone boxes and everything. Well, of course she's tried, but we keep missing each other. And you can't conduct a relationship by phone box. But there still is a relationship to conduct, that is. Hey, come on. I'll buy you a pint. Cough for me? <coughs> and again? <coughs> Thank you. Can't seem to shift it, no how. It's bronchitis, I'm afraid. I'll prescribe you an antibiotic, should help clear it up. Make sure you complete the course. The damp in that doesn't help. The damp? In the cottage. The whole place leaks. We've got a big patch in the bedroom. You're in the tied cottages, aren't you? On the Ashfordley estate? Aye. We've reported the problem. Now Tever gets done about it. The whole place needs a good shake-up. Needs to move with the times, Ashfordley estate. You won't be saying that if it were your job on the line. It doesn't mean you lose your job, Jake. Just because Lord Ashfordley's appointed a new land agent... He's coming with a reputation as an hatchet man. His whole family's frightened for the livelihoods. Aye, oh, and some of those families have worked on the estate for generations. You're right, Rumpus, if he starts laying folk off. It's only the slackers that need to look out. Anyone who does a decent day's graft has got nothing to fear. It's a good job you don't work there, then. All I want to tell her, Alf, is how much I miss her. And that I'm overwhelmed with joy at the thought of becoming a dad. Oh. Well, you should. <laughs> no, I've tried. But when we do manage to talk, all we seem to discuss is how's the weather over there and is Oscar missing her behind the bar? No, it's not easy. Any road, uh, Mrs Ventress is expecting me. I sometimes wish that she was the other side of the Pennine chain. Evening, Mr Bellamy. Matt. Look, uh, you go on, Alf. I think that might have something for me. Well... Oh. Right. You know I'm straight these days, Mr Bellamy. Straight-ish, to be more accurate. Fair enough. But I don't get involved with anything too dodgy. Oh, just spit it out now. It's known I'm Andy behind the wheel of a car, which is why I still get approached to do getaway work, which I always turn down. Of course. There's a gang up from London looking for a driver who knows the local roads. I told them to get lost. They upped the money. I still said no. They weren't too pleased. They've been following me. They're heavy duty, Mr Bellamy. They've got guns. Right. Tell me everything you know about the job they're planning, when it's due to go off, everything. An armed robbery in the Ashfordley area, two or three days' time. Bellamy, Gina, on the phone from Liverpool. All right. Nat, I've got to take this call. Look, just hang on a minute, all right? No, we've not had much rain here either. Look, actually, love, when are you planning on coming back? Gina? Well, look, Gina, give me your phone number and I'll call you back. Gina? Was he gone to? No idea. And you waltz off to talk to your girlfriend. Well, I'm sorry, Sarge. We just kept missing each other every time she tried to phone. I'm not interested. A snout giving you information like that, you should have stuck to him like glue. Uh, we know he wants to talk to Phil, Sarge. It's just a question of waiting for him to make contact again. Oh, no, it isn't. It's a question of getting round to his house now and squeezing every last detail out of him. No, I'm sorry, Sarge. I promised Nat I wouldn't contact him at home. I, I might expose him as an informer. I don't care. We need hard information and fast. Move it. Crane, you know what this Nat Wilmot looks like, don't you? Afraid not, Sarge. It's before my time. All right, then. Ventress, in case he's not at home, you check out his haunts in town. Nick him if necessary, 
But get him in here. Right, right. Needed to talk to his girlfriend. It's unbelievable. There's tiles missing off all these roofs. The water seeps in. You say you've reported this? To the agent. He were more interested in the well-being of the estate's livestock than its workforce. They say there's a new man taking over. They reckon this one's going to be even tighter about spending money. <coughs> well, he's going to have to do something. This is a definite health risk. Welcome. Spot on time, too. Very good. Thank you, my lord. Ah, it's good to be here. Well, it's good to see you. Come on in. How is it, Jeff? Fine, thank you. Yes, Lord Aaron sends his regards. Ah, uh, how is he? Very well. What impressed me at the interview was your keenness to get to grips with figures, you know, paperwork, <laughs> and so forth. Well, estate management's like any other business. If the books don't balance, we're all in trouble. Well, good. Excellent. Last chap I had never seemed to grasp that. To be frank, the whole way we've managed things here needs a jolly good sort out. You have a free hand. Mm, I relish the challenge. Right, well, let's take a spin round the estate, shall we? Show you what's what. Great. Oh, that's typical of this country. What is? He's here about Lord Elsenbury. He transformed his country estate from a medieval mausoleum into one of the country's favourite fun parks. Well, I've been there. They've got one of those uh, safari parks, you know, like with wild animals and that. You know, lions, tigers, gerbils. Well, the gerbils aren't in the... They're in the children's zoo. Anyway, he had the lot. He had a fun fair, miniature railway, go-karting, an entrepreneurial man of vision who moved with the times and made himself a few bob. What are you getting head up about, then? Well, he popped his clogs last month and the family are facing crippling death duties. They're going to have to sell off the whole estate. What, even the gerbils? Yes, David, even the flaming gerbils. It's the trouble with this country. If you do get off your backside and actually achieve something, they penalise you. You've got no worries there, then. Says they can't sell the estate as a whole and they're going to have to flog it off in bits and pieces. Well, I'm thinking about it. That might just represent an opportune and timely venture. Oh, dear. He's just got off his backside. Always a worrying sign, is that? Bellamy, need to talk. Nat? Mrs. Walmart, are you in there? Hello? Right, Phil. I'll tell him. Overnight. Phil says there's no one in at the Wilmot's house. He's left a note asking him to contact us as soon as possible, though. What about Ventress? Nothing. Good morning, madam. How can I help you? It's my husband. He's disappeared. How do you mean, disappeared? Well, he's not been back all night. Missing for just the one night, then? Yeah, but he's never done it before. Well, if I might be frank, madam, in our experience, if a man doesn't come home to his wife for a night, it's usually for one of three reasons. Either there's been a domestic row... Or he's got into an all-night drinking session with his pals. Or possibly he's with another woman. No, mine that and I don't row. And he never drinks to excess. And he reckons dealing with one woman at a time's enough for any man. Did you say Nat? Nat Wilmot, my husband. He's disappeared. I'm very concerned.
As I said on the telephone, I've always put a high priority on the welfare of my employees, Doctor. Well, it hasn't been very effective. Those cottages are terribly run down. That's exactly why I've hired Ben Norton. He's got the right pedigree. Top degree from Agricultural College, second in command on the Hugh Jaron estate, and first class references. Now, here we go in. Leave it to us, Mrs. Wilmot. Let us know immediately if he does show up. Yeah, thanks. Right, details of his car and plate number. I'll put out an alert on it. Make inquiries. Known acquaintances, cronies of pubs, the bookies, etc. Sarge. Hi, Sarge. And you, Ventress. But you'll need someone to work the radio and answer the phones. No, no, I won't. I'll need you all on your feet and out in the streets. Find them. Ah, Ben. I'd like you to meet our local GP, Dr Liz Merrick. Pleased to meet you, Mr Norton. I'd say the pleasure's entirely mine. Liz is a bit concerned about the state of some of the tied cottages, how they might be affecting the health of her patients. Ah, uh, yes. I've unearthed a couple of letters from uh, what I take to be my predecessor's correspondence file. As I'm afraid the last chat wasn't too strong on the paperwork, Liz. Uh, tiles missing, leaky roofs, damp in bedrooms, is that it? Yes, I've seen it for myself. It's disgraceful to expect people to live in those conditions. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I'm formulating a proposal to deal with the whole matter of these cottages. Well, there you are, you see. On the ball already. We'll leave you to it then, Ben. I'd give it urgent priority. Well, for a doctor as charming as you, that shouldn't be a problem. Mr Norton, please don't patronise me. Bronchitis is nothing to smile about. Actually, for a woman, I gather she's a damn good doctor. Shouldn't have been a mess in. And now someone else is getting all your best. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. Oh, Blaketon. I'd like you to meet my new right-hand man, Ben Norton. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Thought I'd introduce him to the local watering hole. Uh, two pints of best, I think, if you'd be so kind. Just a half for me, thanks. I want to get stuck in this afternoon. Well, keen as mustard, this fella. He'll shake the place up, I can tell you. And that's a good thing, is it? Well, the bank seems to think so, yes. Apparently, I need some figures in black on my statement. So, uh, these rumours about redundancies could be true, then? Oh, I'm assessing all aspects of management. But if we need to rationalise the workforce to produce a leaner business environment, then uh, we will. In plain English, that's yes, then. Oh, come on, Oscar, that's confidential. Let's take a pew, shall we, Ben? Uh, uh, Mr Norman. Vernon Scripps. Uh, Lord Ashfordley knows me as one of the driving forces of the business community here in Ainsfield. Oh, right. Good to meet you. It's a pleasure to hear we've got a man of vision and enterprise at Ashfordley Hall. Oh, I don't know about that. My brief's simply to put things on a more commercial basis. Ah. So you'd be open to any money-making ideas appropriate for an estate of that size? Definitely. Yeah, if you have a proposition, my door, as they say, is uh, always open. Excuse me. Yes. Yes, he's very promising. Hmm. Seems to me his plan to balance the books is just simply throw people out of work. These old estates, Oscar, have got to evolve. You've got to move with the times. Sarge. Uh, he's not been seen by anyone in the town since yesterday. But he's a survivor, isn't that? He'll be all right. It's not him I'm worried about. We have the prospect of an armed raid here in the next couple of days. No idea what the target is. Well, banks, post offices, warehouses, firms with wages deliveries. We can't watch out for them all. Couldn't we get a division to draft in more men, Sarge? Well, I was hoping we'd find Nat Wilmot first. Then I'd have something firmer to tell them. 
As it is, I have to inform HQ that there may be a robbery planned, but we've no detail on it. Embarrassing, given the reasons for our lack of information. Come in. Um, there's a Jake Clark, Frost on the estate, asking to see you. Uh, can't he wait till surgery? Well, he knows that you've been to see Lord Ashfordley about the tied cottages, and he's got something to tell you about them. No, please stay. The more folk know what's going on, the better. It's a confidential memo from the new agent, Norton, to Lord Ashfordley. Seems Norton's got a plan for doing up the tied cottages on the estate. Well, they need doing up, don't they? Tell her, Doctor. Tell her what his little plan is. Mr Norton is recommending that the tenants be moved out whilst renovation takes place. Their jobs would go under labour force rationalisation and the renovated cottages would be rented out as profitable holiday lets. Where did you get this? Someone on the house staff got it to me. And I don't tell anyone I give it to you. My job could be at risk. I just thought you should know what's afoot, Doctor. No, I appreciate it's not much to go on, sir, but the source is usually reliable. Ah, well, I'm afraid my officer was called away on other business for a moment and... Yes, sir. No backup without concrete info, understood. Yes, I'll call you as soon as we have anything definite. Elsonby Estates. Ah, oh, good afternoon. Uh, Werner Scripps here, uh, Managing Director of Scripps Business Environments. We should refuse to work until Ashfordley gets rid of him. Yeah. 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 Hang on a minute, Jake. You've all got families to feed. I mean, striking now will bring misery to you sooner than it will to Lord Ashfordley. Oh, so should we let him get away with turfing people like Wilf here? Out their homes and out their jobs? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just suggesting you get legal advice on tenancy rights, employment rights. Then you'll know where you stand. Who's going to pay? Ashfordley's got an army of lawyers to fight his corner. No, I say we hit him where it hurts, in his pocket. Down tools, without a workforce, that estate's unmanageable. Jake, before you take a step like that, you should talk to Lord Ashfordley. When he sees the strength of your feeling, he may reconsider. He's hired Norton to get rid of workers and use their arms for profit. We want Norton out, and the best way to do that is to strike. Yeah, let's strike! Lord Ashfordley's a decent man. Somebody should talk to him. Well, he may be a decent man, but what about the new bloke? What did you make of him? They're all very angry, Dennis, and every right to be. Things could turn ugly on Ashfordley Estate. Great. That's all I need. Had a bad day? Oh, got a dressing down from HQ, that's all. Why? Ugh. Phil Bellamy was being given a tip-off by an armed robbery. Mm. And he broke off to take a phone call from Gina. Can you credit her? By the time he'd finished whispering sweet nothings, the snout had gone. I had to cover for him when I reported to Division, the stupid idiot. That's a bit harsh. Why? It was an idiotic thing to do. People have private lives as well. Jean is pregnant with his baby. I can understand why he'd want to talk to her. Oh, maybe, but not if it puts lives at risk. It's a question of priorities. And the job's always a priority for you. You've been here before, haven't we? You know, I'm really glad that Phil puts his wife to be and future child before work. And if I rang you from Liverpool or some place, I hope you might at least be bothered to say hello. Whatever you were doing. Yes, Merton. Steve, yes, what is it? It's abandoned in a field off the old Whitby Road. No, there's no sign of that. But there are blood stains in the car. There are several sets of footprints, Sarge. Possibly was abducted after a struggle, dragged to another vehicle and then away. Whoever these people are, seems like they mean business.
tell he was frightened. You should never have left him. This is not your fault, Phil. Not much for forensics to go on. If they'd done him any serious harm, I'll never forgive myself. They won't harm him too much if they want him to drive the getaway car. Well, they may have given up on that. Could just be holding him so he doesn't blab before the robbery. Yeah, and afterwards he knows too much. Nat said they were a London gang, didn't he? Yeah. So they must be living in temporary accommodation then, locally. We are. A hotel, guest house, B&B, rented cottage. Come on. We haven't much time. I've got a lot on today. I could do with David staying here and giving me a hand. I need him in a chauffeuring capacity, Bernard. I want to make the right impression. Who will? This is some nonsense to do with the Elsenby Fun Park, isn't it? It is not nonsense, Bernard. Entertainment is a big part of the business environment on posh estates today. Vernon, if you want to create the right impression, you should go dressed as a clown. Is that where we're going, Mr Vernon? Elsenby Hall? Yes, David. Oh, can, can we go and see the gerbils? Just get in and drive, will you? Morning, Doctor. Mr Norton? Please, call me Ben. I'm on my way to see Lord Ashfordley. Ah, he's not here, I'm afraid. He's away on business till tomorrow. Anything I can help with? Could we speak in your office? Oh, it'd be a pleasure. See you there. You have to excuse the mess, I'm afraid. I'm getting there. Off your tea, coffee? Nothing, thank you. Have a seat. I'll stand if that's all right. Are you always like this? Aren't doctors supposed to cultivate a friendly bedside manner? Or perhaps I've done something to offend you? Uh, not me, but quite a few other people. Oh, who gave you this? Never mind who gave it to me. The people you're proposing to evict are my patients. Now, Wilf Langton has worked on this estate all his life. He's worked hard, out in all weathers, and hardly ever missed a day through illness. And how do you repay his loyalty? Liz, listen. Don't call me Liz and you listen. Now, I don't know what sort of business ethics they teach in agricultural college, but I think turning hard-working people out of their homes and jobs is appalling. Doing it simply to exploit their homes for profit is barbaric. Yes, barbaric. Now, you might think that you're quite something, but in my eyes, you're not. And that's your considered opinion, is it, Dr Merrick? Yes, it is. Well, then I'm glad you're not my GP. I prefer someone to make a diagnosis based on facts. I can read, Mr Norton, and the facts speak for themselves. You won't get away with this without a fight. I promise you that. The stately homes of England are beautiful, they stand. To prove the upper classes have still the upper hand. Though the fact that they have to be rebuilt and frequently mortgaged to the hilt is inclined to take the guilt of the gingerbread and certainly damps the fun of the eldest son. Yes, a sorry story. The family's in such a parlous state, they're even selling off her ladyship's jewellery. Really? It's going to the prestigious Fawcett collection in New York. Shame. Anyway, as I said, I'm the client who's in the market for some of the gear you're shifting. Most of it's spoken for already, I'm afraid, Mr. Scripps. Spoken for? A fairground in Blackpool's bought the big wheel, a large estate in Wiltshire's taking our safari stock. What about the gerbils? Gerbils? The children's zoo in Accrington's having those, I believe. Never mind about the gerbils, David. What's left? It is quite a popular attraction. Why not? Well, Mr. Scripps, I'm, I'm not sure about this. It's been very popular here. Good money spinner. Six carriages, six seats in each, two shillings a ride, that's um, uh, £3.12. Four trips an hour, 14 days, ten hours a day, peak summer months. That's over £100. What do we get for the asking price? 
Everything. Engine, carriages, track, signal box. Excuse me. Is there a guard tap and a whistle? We'll even throw those in. So what about dismantling and shipping? We'll arrange that. Aye. Right. Well, you've got a deal, then. Excellent. Dr Beachy may have closed a few railway lines down. You'll be known for opening one up. Can I go the whistle? Even better than that, David. You can drive it, and then you'll be doing what you do best. What's that? Going round in circles all day. <laughs> Ashfordly Police, Mrs Amos. Uh, have you had any people with a London accent asking for rooms recently? Oh, you don't do B and B anymore. Right. Uh, no, uh, fine, thanks. Sorry, Sarge. We're getting nowhere, are we? Delta Alpha two four to control. Yes, Steve. Go ahead. A couple of possibilities, Sarge. Recent lets of property to men who gave London addresses. All right, you and Bellamy check it out, but go carefully. Will do, Sarge. He didn't offer to review the plan? He was only interested in how I got hold of his confidential memo. You didn't tell him? Of course not. So how did he justify what he's doing? To be honest, I didn't give him much of a chance. I'm afraid I lost my temper. His whole attitude makes me very angry. Oh, he seems to have made a lot of people angry. Now we down tools from tomorrow. Yes. Yes. We load a demo with placards demanding that Ben Norton be sacked. Yes. Well, he's always been a bit of a hothead, huh, Jake? Oh, that's true enough. I mean, I agree with his cause, but sometimes it's advisable to go about things with a bit of caution. I wish you'd tell that to Vernon. He's had another airbrain, get rich quick scheme. Taking his checkbook with him, lumbered himself with I don't know what. I fear the worst. Bernie, where will it end? I hope you lot haven't got much on tomorrow. Oscar, what do you mean? Well, the uh, workforce up at the Ashfordley estate are coming out on strike in the morning and they're blocking the roads in and out of the estate. It's going to need policing. I heard about these cottages. What's Lord Ashfordley playing at? I wouldn't bother. He's not back till tomorrow. It's the new bloke that's stirring all this up. Seth. A number of trees been felled around here recently. Can you tell me why? Don't know. Diseased or something. I just do what I'm told. Where's the chap you work with? Jake, is it? Jake Clark? He's gone through a meeting. Mostly a statement at it. Meeting? They've got grievances. I think they can discuss them on the estate's time, do they? If they're not careful, some may find they haven't got jobs to come back to. Just a routine call, sir. I gather you recently rented this property. Yes, I have. Well, we always like to say hello to visitors in our area, especially in remote places like this. Oh, well, that's most reassuring. You here on business or pleasure, sir? Uh, entirely for pleasure. You come up on your own? Yes. The wife's strictly a beach and suntan sort of person. I love to get the boots on, go up in the hills hiking. Spotted a pair of peregrine falcons this morning. Absolutely magnificent. 
Would you like to pop in for a cup of tea or something? We'd love to. I'm afraid we have to be off. OK. Well, um, thanks for calling by. Thank you. Nice chap. Nice car, too. I hope that pair are as thick as they looked. Cos we can do without the local law sticking their oar in at this stage, can't we, my friend? Out! Out! Norton! Out! Norton! Out! Norton! Out! You'll not get on us to the estate today. Appreciate Norton, if you could turn around, Norton, please. Norton, Thank you. Norton! Out! Norton! Out! If there is to be a robbery, it's likely to be today. And without hard info, divisions still aren't prepared to draft in extra men. We also have to deal with a demonstration on the Ashfordley estate. Ventress, you'd better handle that. You two have like out on patrol, showing a presence. We can't cover everything but park up occasionally outside the banks, the post office, etc. These firms are expecting the wages van today, so keep an eye out there too. I'll man the radio and the phones and respond as backup as and when necessary. Right, on you go. Yes, Sarge. Right, we're on. Security van's on its way to pick up the goodies. Waiting that side road. By the time the van gets there, I'll be right behind them. Ben Norton, my lord. Ben, why? He's planning on throwing families out their homes. And we're not going to stand for it, are we, lad? No, we're not. If you've got a grievance, you come up to the hall and discuss it in a civilised manner. You do not stand in the road shouting at me. There's nothing to discuss. Sack Norton, I will not go back to work. Out! Out! Norton! Out! 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 Norton! Out! 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 Norton! Out! We mean it, my lord. He goes. Oh, you've got no workforce. Out! 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 You've spent every penny and bought it up to the hill for a toy train. If you don't sell it on shoppies, you're bankrupt. Bernard, you have to speculate to accumulate. It's the golden rule of the business environment. Codswallop. You should have had a definite buyer lined up. I have. Ben Norton's going to have it for the estate. It's a real money spinner. It's just what he's after. Well, when Lord Ashfordley sees the disruption Ben Norton scores, he may not even have a job anymore. What disruption? What is going on, Norton? The oh, place seems to be on strike. I'm starving. Where's Cook? Um, well, I'm afraid she's walked out as well. I haven't had my breakfast yet. I go away for 24 hours, the whole estate falls to pieces. What the devil are you playing at, man? It's, it's really not my fault, my lord. I hired you to improve things, not ruin me. Sort it out, or you're fired. <coughs> Must have made my own damn breakfast. <coughs> You're doing back, Bellamy. I know I screwed up the other night, Sarge, but I'm still a good copper. This isn't the time. You should be out on patrol. And a good copper has instincts. That chap from London that we visited yesterday, staying at a cottage out on the moors. Up here for some hiking, you said? Yeah. He was just a bit too glib. So as we left, I mentally made a note of his number plate, scribbled it down later. He's been gnawing away at me, Sarge. Look, can we run a check on this car number? And why not? Well, precious little else to go on. Not 
See you around, Gaffer. There's been no trouble, has there, Ralph? Oh, none at all. Seems to be perfectly good humoured. They seem to have almost everyone's support. He won't add to the good humour, though. Well, I'll say this for him. He's got guts coming here. One brave man. A rather stupid and arrogant one. Are you sure this is wise, Mr Norton? I don't think you'll be very welcome here. I want a word with Jake Clark. Oh, I doubt that he's in the mood to negotiate now. Oh, I'm not here to negotiate. I want to ask him why he's been chopping down perfectly healthy trees. According to vehicle registration records, this plate number doesn't exist. Which means either you memorised it incorrectly or... Or I got it right and they're false plates. Look, uh, shall I go up there, sir? No, it wouldn't be wise to go alone. But if I go with you, we'll leave Steve Crane holding the town on his own. Norton, out! 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 Norton, out! Out! out He's out, inflaming out, things by being out, here. Out, out. Unless you're here to say that the Holiday Cottage scheme has been abandoned, I'd go back if I were you. There isn't a Holiday Cottage scheme. The memo you gave me was typed on estate-headed paper, but it was a fabrication. So there's no plan to do up the cottages? Yes, there is. But only to give the present occupants somewhere decent to live. The Holiday Cottages are an invention. To blacken my name. Why? Who would want to do that? Jake Clark. Mr. Norton's discovered that he was felling estate trees, selling the timber to a factory and pocketing the cash. My predecessor seems to have been in on the scam. You'll see. They pretended the trees were diseased. Jake realised it wouldn't take me long to get on to what had been happening. He's obviously orchestrated a campaign to get me out. I suggest you tell Norton to clear up before someone gets hurt. I think Mr. Norton would like a word with you first about felling trees and selling the timber. And forging memos? Oi, you! Come back! I think Lord Ashford would like to have a word with you. Quite something, isn't he? This Mr Norton. No sign of the jag. We might have missed them. They could be carrying out the robbery right now. Or else this man was legit and you just got the number wrong. No, I'm sure I got it right, Sarge. Well, either way, let's get back, sharpish. Can I back my instincts one more time, Sarge? Do it! There's no warrant. We'll be liable for any damage. Where are they? What's the target? When is the robbery taking place? They're after Lady Elfenby's jewellery. A, a security van. Being driven to Manchester Airport. And where are they planning to hit the van? Come on, man, where? Have the keys, and your wife just might see you pair again. Our police on the weapon! Mm. 
Maybe you're not as thick as you look. Well done, Bellamy. I think you've just about redeemed yourself. This train is the train, this train. This train is the train, this train. This train is the train. Morning. Mr. Scripps about? Possibly. Of Scripps Business Environment? How about my brother? I have a delivery for him. It's our final sale. I thought I'd make it personally. One miniature train engine, six carriages, signal box, a mile of single-gauge track. There are three more lorries on their way with the rest of that. One guard's hat and a whistle. Come in. I was told I'd find you. Oh, hello. Have a seat. You'll be pleased to hear I've found good temporary accommodation for Wilf and the others from the tight cottages. Whilst repair work starts, I'm bringing their own homes up to standard. Good. Not before time. <laughs> well, you can hardly blame me for that. I moved as fast as I could. I appreciate that, Mr Norton. And I apologise for the misunderstanding over the memo. No apology necessary. So, apart from the other proposal, that's that. Other proposal? I propose we drop this Mr. Norton and Doctor stuff and continue our relationship on a Liz and Ben basis. I agree to give it consideration, Mr. Norton. Morning, chaps. Everything all right? Don't ask, Doctor. He'd better want it here, Vernon. Bernard, will you calm down? Ben Norton will welcome this with open arms. Well, I've uh, discussed the idea of having a miniature railway in the grounds. Unfortunately, it simply doesn't appeal to Lord Ashfordley. But it's a real money spinner. It takes over a hundred pounds a day. I, uh, I appreciate that, but uh, it's not in keeping with how Lord Ashfordley sees things developing around here. That's it then. You're bankrupt. I'm stuck with a giant rotten train set piled up on my full court. Mm, actually, things may not have entirely uh, come off the rails, if I can put it that way. Indeed, there may yet be light at the end of the tunnel. Really? Before I came here, I uh, worked on the Arran estate. A miniature railway would be perfect there. I've spoken to Lord Arran and... Uh, well, he's agreed to take it. Brilliant! Hear that, Bernard? In business, Vernon, it always pays to have more than a uh, one-track mind, if you get my uh, train of thought. <laughs> we all occasionally mess up in the job, even me from time to time. Really? Well, we'd never noticed, Alf. <laughs> <laughs> well, lesson learned, believe me. Bellamy, you won't want to take this in. It's Gina, in a call box. Thanks, Oscar. Hello, Gina, love. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. What's the weather been like there? Oh, just hang on a sec, Phil. Gina? Gina? Oh, come on. She'll do it. Only a run out if she's not careful. Gina, love! Are you there? Come on, Gina. Hey, stop looking about. I'm on the phone. Forget the phone, Phil. I've come home. <laughs> Di, this is Steve. Brother Bobby, eh? How do you know? Well, there's a room across your forehead where your helmet's been. It's my husband. I think he's trying to kill me. Lion dung! This stuff is the creme de la creme of animal droppings. God! 